So back to those storks, right? Mm -hmm. So I gave you a Greek etymology possibility. It's not for sure. But Betham said the discovery of the means of navigating by night induced these navigators to assume the honorable names of Pelagi or Pelasgi or Pelargi um, or people who had so far advanced in the science of navigation as to be able to proceed by night as well as by day. Mm -hmm. This discovery is celebrated in the Yugubian tables in which if the tables refer to Etruscan or Etruscan void, I call them Etruscan just because the C, the SC in Latin is pronounced like an SH. So it's like hard for me to like reverse that. And since Latin comes from them, I, I just assume it's Etruscan, but it mm -hmm. could be Etruscan. Um, if the table refers to the Etruscan voyagers, they are called Puni or Phoenicians and much exultation is expressed on the occasion of the wonderful discovery. Both words have the same import. Now he uses Celtic. He, so for Palazgi or Palargi, he says, Bay, night, las, light, gi, people. So the first one would be Belazgi. Mm. The second one he says would be Bay, night, la, day, r, steering, gi, g-o-i, people. This is Celtic now. That is navigators by night and day, Palargi or Belargi. The letter P is used in more ancient tables for B, but it is scarcely necessary to make use of the arguments where the analogy is so very close. And by the way, when I say tables, like an old like researcher like that, from like the 19th centuries and early, they, the table when they say tables, they mean tablets. Like that's what they called them back then. So it would be tablets for us. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pelasgi were but Phoenician mariners who were to be found not only in Greece, but everywhere a ship could approach the coasts of the Mediterranean. Like the English of the present day, their operations were different in different localities. In some, they had only factories, but where they found an eligible position and encouraging circumstances, they settled colonies as in Italy, Gaul, and the British Islands. Each nation, having received these allegories with their civilization from the Phoenicians, fabricated systems upon them according to the fantasies of their leading hierophants. A hierophant is somebody it translates as a sacred revealer, right? Mm -hmm. the high priest. Every addition increasing the aberration and variance until the multiplied conceits and fancies of the human mind had formed the intricate, fabulous, and absurd systems of mythology spread over the face of the earth by priests and by poets, each assisting to fabricate the wonderful legends of the numerous volumes of the Acta Deorum, which is the act of the God, acts of the gods. And so this is, people who are familiar with my work, I show how the Greeks, now to be fair, it might not be the Greeks, but as far, it, like, and what I mean by that, it could be the church doing all of the farrago, do, reassigning everything, but doing so in Greek to make it look like the Greeks. So it might not have actually been the Greek people that did this. However, as it stands now, if it were a people, the Greek basically took the Phoenician mythology. If you look at the Etruscan mythology, it's all Phoenician. Even um, like Minerva, right? That's gonna be Phoenician and Etruscan. And so the Latins kept that, but the Greeks had um, Athena. And in Celtic, Athena literally means from Thena. And Thena or Tinia is the Phoenician god. And so when you have Minerva springing up from Tinia's head, that's what it means, Athena, from Athena. So the Greeks have Athena. So you can see that they take everything and they, they take the Phoenician names and then they switch it around. Like, for example, you have a country like Spania, Spania, Spain, that literally meant the land of rabbits or conies, which is an archaic name for rabbits, vermin, because it was infested with rabbits when they got there. Mm -hmm. So much so that there's even accounts of um, them appealing to the Roman Empire to send soldiers over there to destroy the rabbits so they can civilize it. So you have all these places. Well, if, then once the Greeks take over, they change that and they say, no, Spain is named after Pan, that god. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they do all kinds of things like that. And we, as a result, go from having a mythology where the gods are all like these benevolent um things that are like kind of like teachers to us to now the gods are like these like crazy vindictive 
freak shows that do all kinds of horrible shit to people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that all happens with the Greeks. Not only that, you have a different, the, na the planets all have different names going up to the second century BC. Then you have the Greeks changing the names of the planets and they changed it into their old, like old sun gods. And they assigned it to every, like if you were to even look at like the moon of Jupiter, yo, right? That's an old name for Jupiter. But mm. now it's Jupiter's moon. moon. Some people say Io or Eo but it's yo, right? And that, that is the first two letters of Tetragrammaton, 